Hello everyone. So we are about to enter in to a lesson number 46. And let me tell you, lesson number 46 is amazing because this is the first time we're really starting to talk about forgiveness. Okay. Now for me, I know forgiveness is the only way to true happiness. And I was taught by Robin Duncan, who you can check out here on YouTube, as well as miraclesforliving.org. Amazing. She actually does, um, you know, video, or she does uh, audios on all the lessons as well, completely for free. She also has tons of other free stuff out there that I really, 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 really recommend uh, that you go look at because she has just been such an inspiration to me and just so amazing and clarified so much for me. And so she has these three levels of forgiveness, okay? So there's level zero. I'm so spiritual, and I'm going to forgive you because I'm so spiritual. You're not spiritual, but I'm spiritual, and I'm going to be the bigger person, and I'm going to forgive you. That's arrogance. We don't need to go to that level of forgiveness. Then there's level one of forgiveness, which is victimhood. You did something terrible and wrong to me, and... I'm going to forgive you, but I'm never going to forget, okay? That old adage, I forgive, but I never forget. Yeah, and not forgetting, you imprison yourself. Then level two, which you would think is actually like, I used to think this was like the best. I forgive you because I know you were in a bad place and I was in a bad place and I know you were triggered, which made me triggered. And so let's just forget it and let's just move on with life, okay? Well, that's only level two. That's compassion. Then we get to level three, true forgiveness. I forgive you because in truth you have done nothing wrong. Okay, now once again, that, you know, that's going past the illusion of seeing the person as really being able to hurt or harm the truth of who you are. Remember, nothing can touch the eternal light and love that you are. Nothing can change it. Nothing can uh, manipulate it. Nothing. Nothing, 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 nothing at all. Okay? So now let's kind of start looking at this lesson. God does not forgive because God has never condemned. And there must be condemnation before forgiveness is necessary. Forgiveness is the great need of this world, but that is because it is a world of illusions. Those who forgave, forgive are thus releasing themselves from illusions, while those who withhold forgiveness are binding themselves to them. As you condemn only yourself, so do you forgive only yourself. Okay, so once again, condemnation. What is that? Judgment. That's how I like to look at condemnation. It's judgment. So as if you are judging, then yeah, there's the need for forgiveness because you are condemning another person. Then if you don't offer forgiveness, what's happening is basically, let's say that Susan in the second grade cut your hair. Okay, and that just brings, you know, you are now super triggered by people touching your hair and this, that, and the other thing. Okay, now if you forgive Susan, then you can release yourself from that illusion that, you know, you could be hurt, you can be harmed, you know, that people are going to come after you, whatever the case may be. But you have to release yourself by releasing Susan because the more you have her in your mind, constantly being like, Susan. Basically, you put Susan in a jail in your mind, and you keep and you are the uh, the warden of that jail or the guard, and you got your little billy stick and you're clanking against those bars, being like, "Susan, don't forget, girl, second grade, you cut my hair. Don't forget, you cut my hair." So not only are you reminding Susan, but you're reminding yourself, and you have now trapped yourself because someone has to remind Susan that she cut your hair. Someone has to remind her, and the only person who's going to do an adequate job, of course, is you. So this is why it's so key for forgiveness. Now it says, yet another God, yet although God does not forgive, 
His love is nevertheless the basis of forgiveness. Remember, God is unconditional love. That's why this lesson is God is the love in which I forgive. I forgive unconditionally because in truth I am love. Fear condemns and love forgives. Forgiveness thus undoes what fear has produced, returning the mind to the awareness of God. For this reason, forgiveness can truly be called salvation. It is the means by which illusions disappear. Okay? So then it says that today's exercise requires at least three full five-minute practice periods and as many shorter ones as possible. Being the longer practice period, begin the longer practice periods by repeating today's idea to yourself as usual. Close your eyes as you do so and spend a minute or two in searching your mind for those whom you have not forgiven. And I'm going to be super honest, it's not that hard. They come to you like flies to, to honey. In searching your mind for those you have not forgiven. It does not matter how much you have not forgiven them. You have forgiven them entirely or not at all. Now, I love that. I mean, it gives you, it's like either you, you have forgiven them all the way or you haven't at all. It's not, well, I've forgiven them for this. No, you forgive them for all of that, not just this or that. You know, oh, I forgive Susan for picking up the scissors. No, we got to forgive Susan for picking up the scissors, for, you know, cutting your hair, so forth, so on. We got to forgive the whole thing. So then it says, you know, for any number of people you have not forgiven, we say, God is the love in which I forgive you, Susan. We're just saying, we're just going to use the word Susan. The purpose of the first phrase of today's practice period is to put you in the position to forgive yourself. Remember, any time. That you see some, that you judge something in another person. It is only because you fear it within yourself. And it may not be conscious. It may be subconscious. Maybe down deep, deep, deep in your mind. But remember, the world is, and the world and everyone in it is only a reflection of your inner world. So once again, that's why forgiveness is so important. So then we go to the second phrase, and it says, God is the love in which I forgive myself. Then devote the remainder of the practice periods to adding such ideas like, God is the love in which I love myself. God is the love in which I bless myself. The form of the application may vary considerably, but the central idea should not be lost sight of. You might say, for example, I cannot be guilty because I am a son of God. Once again, reiterating the truth of who you are. I have already been forgiven. Well, you already have been forgiven because God has never condemned you. You have condemned you. And in you recognizing that, you can say, okay, I forgive myself because God has never condemned me. God doesn't see my soul as tainted or dirty or terrible or tattered or torn. God sees me as whole. God sees me as the truth of who I am. No fear is possible in the mind beloved of God. Because remember, love dispels fear. There is no need to attack because love has forgiven me. And so God is the love in which I forgive you. If someone, you know, just kind of comes up on the street, bumps you, and maybe you're just being like, ugh, you know, you get really angry. You know what? God is the love that is with, that, ugh, God is the love in which I forgive you. And that's it. So this lesson, you see how excited I am about it because I know forgiveness works. I know it because I've experienced it myself. I have experienced what it's like to truly forgive someone and in forgiving them, seeing them show up differently. And here is a perfect example of that. My dad had never been super supportive of me taking this path of, you know, doing spiritual work. It just wasn't something that he saw as practical. Now, of course, he never told me you're a terrible person or anything like that, but there was never any real support there. And so I really started to forgive that and be like, no, I want, I need to forgive this whole idea that my father, you know, doesn't support me, that he doesn't like that I'm doing this. I need to forgive that. And let me tell you, it took three months and there was a lot of times I wanted to be like, 
mm, I'm right. But I kept on doing it and I kept on forgiving. And then one day he heard me, I was talking to a friend of mine and I just was not in a good state of mind. I was feeling a lot of lack. I was feeling like I'm just not doing enough, so forth and so on. And, you know, he must have heard me because before he went to work, he wrote me a note. Now, he didn't bring it to me, but he wrote me a note and it said, spirit never gives you what you want, but it always gives you what you need. Remember that you are love and you are loved. And I was like, WTF, who wrote this note? I'm like, did a ghost write me this note? Because I know it's not my dad. Because that's not something he would ever do. He's not, you know, he doesn't talk like that. And I was like, oh my God, because I forgave him. I actually did it. And he actually showed up differently. I was like, wow, like this is amazing. So forgiveness does work. Forgiveness releases you, releases them. So you can see everything differently. Don't see forgiveness as a chore or something you have to do. See it for what it is, your release. See it for the truth that it is, that it's going to free you to see with the eyes of love. And let me tell you, it's beautiful. It is beautiful if you practice it consistently. You will see a change. Remember one thing that's so important. You are worthy of consistent effort. You are worthy of consistent effort. Never forget that. So I love you. And I thank you so much for joining me for this video. It has been such a pleasure to be able to share this with you guys.